Hello again, it's Charlie and Jeeves from Team Locals. And we're here at Southie Skate Park, built in 1978. Let's go inside. Woo! Okay, so we're here with Ephraim from Tassa Skate Park. We're just going to have a little bit of chat about the history of the park and um, some of the events that they've got coming up this year. Uh, I'm manager of Tassa Skate Park. I'm responsible for looking after the skate park, um, running the skate park store, so stock checks. Um, we have a cleaner helper system here where I help kids develop their skills. We've started doing like a skate park store team where the kids can work here and build their skills and gradually as they build their skills we've got like three riders now on national brands which is really cool so there's it's a little bit of youth work there's obviously adults that come here as well we do a mini wheelers project there's a lot of things events running events roller discos just a bit of everything really it's a nice mix one of the things that keeps the job interesting is something different every day yeah, this year marks 40 years of South Skate Parks. It was built in 1978. They used to roller skate around in the 1920s, tea parties, that kind of thing, around the um, bandstand. And now, obviously, it's a skate park that was built in 1978 and emulated Californian skate parks. So 16th and 17th of June, it's 40 years of the park. So um, there, we, there's a big skateboard competition on the 17th. It's called Shut Up and Skate. And then on the, the Friday and Saturday before it, we've got events going on for all sports and a celebration of all things South Sea Skate Park. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I always sort of like this place, it, it, it's South Sea in its own right. It feels like it's its own community. Like you come in here and it feels separate from South Sea. So the way we involve is um, interaction with people, coaching. I've been professional world champion myself. so. I try and give back to the community what I've learned and encourage other members of staff to do the same. And we've, at the moment, we've got three members of the British cycling team for the Olympics, three of them out of the four, all from Southsea. So that's pretty good. That's really amazing, yeah. I mean, you Tony Hawk, um, all the Bones Brigade um, that appeared on all the Pal Peralta videos. Um, and then through the years, Matt Hoffman, Dave Mirror, rest in peace, Dave Mirror. Um, all huge names, Rodney Mullen, one of the best skateboarders to ever do it, uh, as Tony Hawk is as well. There's just been so many. And then obviously they had the King of Concrete competition here that my dad organized that, that run for 17 years and was one of the most important events in the history of BMX. The idea was that he used the whole skate park. So you had bowl competition, a half pipe competition, which is the big ramp right here. We had flatland, which is tricks on the ramps. Then you had mini ramp, which is a ramp like this, which is a little bit smaller. There was, and there's what you call street riding, which is basically now, basically skate park, it's called park, because it's ramps at the skate park, it's not street. Street is when you're out on the street, but it was labeled street, but it's not. So they've called it park. And that's what's going in the um, Olympics in 2020 in Tokyo. I grew up riding BMX here. I uh, started when I was 10, I'm 44 now. First manager when I was here, John Thurston, put me on a South Sea Skate Park trick team. We toured all around England. I became six times British champion, um, competed in the X Games six times, medaled in the X Games twice world champion, once as an amateur, and then once as a professional. Uh, I was professional for 25 years and, you know, pro salary and lived, lived the dream really. And now I try and organize events here and help kids, coach kids, and advise kids like responses and like how to conduct yourself and um, try and give back, I call it pro rider responsibility where you try and use my experience in a positive way to help kids know, know the mistakes before they arise almost sometimes. You can, I feel like I can help with what I've learned to make kids path a little bit easier although you have to sort of let kids make their own mistakes obviously but it's nice if they can just have a a platform where they could just get on with what it all is all about and having fun and that's ultimately what it is is just finding different ways to have fun that's what I'm still doing I invent tricks and um, I'm off to Hertfordshire this weekend 
to do a show up there and coach kids. So it's still going on, you know, I'm still giving back to um, the worldwide scene as well. I run my own website, which is the biggest Flatland website in the world, um, Flat Matters Online. Um, I've just been involved in writing the UCI rule book for the Olympics, 57 pages, quite mad. But um, yeah, I'll just continually, um, I judge competitions worldwide, I'm about to go and do an event in Switzerland. Um, yeah, there's a lot to it, a lot of layers, but ultimately it's just giving advice to kids and trying to be a like, coach and mentor kids, basically. And Do you feel like you've built up um, a little community then here? Yeah, very much so, yeah. Yeah, yeah you could, it's like, I guess it's like the ultimate job for me is like a job I love and a job I never take lightly and I try and, you know, make the best out of it and always remember myself as a kid knocking the door down to get open. So you're a social enterprise? We are a charity runscape park, yes. So how does that work? How do you fund yourselves? How do you make money? Like, how do you, how do you, keep, how do you keep everything ticking along, basically? We run um, as a, a charity started five years ago and the council gave us um, some money to, to help get started. The amount decreased every year until um, last year where it has to self-sustain itself. Basically from the start of April till November it's all about making as much money as we can because ultimately the winter is really tough and there's a loss down here so um, events, building up the skate park store and sunny days like this, if you get a sunny day at the weekend the place is packed. We have a mini wheeler session which regularly gets like 80 kids coming to the park which is fantastic. When I was a kid, the seafront was really busy and now it's quite quiet. So it's nice to see a place which is well used. I mean, up until a couple of years ago, the tennis courts across the road were quite derelict. It's nice to see that they've been done up and it, places being used again. Kids have got something to be active in. You've got a volleyball court over there. Um, Canoe Lake's now being invested in, which is really good. When I'm not here, I'm often practicing down at Canoe Lake in the basketball courts. So it's, it's just bringing it together with events and um, making it a fun place to come that people want to come and visit. Like some of the sessions here, if you come here on the weekend, it's absolute madness, some of the tricks that go down. And then kids are talking about it. Social media is really important. Started out on the Instagram with no followers. Now we're up to 14.3K, it's pretty good. Can you tell us a little bit more about how social media has played a role in um, increasing awareness of the park? Well, the, my whole idea with the social media, no one told me to do social media. I, I decided I was going to do it. And I was sort of like thinking, right, you're sat at home on your Xbox playing or you're playing Fortnite at home. What are you, what is, how are you going to get a kid to come down here? So you post videos, bright sunny day like this, you put a sunny picture, a really positive message and try to get people to come down here. And we have after school clubs. Um, where we hold competitions and kids win a free session or stickers, wristbands, anything like that. Create like a little league where kids like compete with each other. You know, you try and get a bit of competition down here, it's quite healthy for young kids because kids are just quite, the generation now are quite easy that they just stay on an Xbox or Fortnite all day. It's really quite sad, I think. Whereas we've got a beautiful seafront down here that kids should be able to come down here and if they don't want to go into the skate park they can go to Canoe Lake you know they could go over to um, the tennis courts as I just mentioned they could go to the South Parade Pier, Clarence Pier, go down to Gun Wharf you know there's a lot of things to do is so I just think we have to shout about ourselves a lot more so that's basically what I'm doing I'm shouting about what we do whether it's on um, we just launched a new website thanks to the guys at Tiny Engines for doing that and that's sort of about raising awareness that we're a charity. It's a .org instead of .com. So people have already asked, why is it a .org? And then it's like explaining, we are a charity. Oh, because we've got the council put council signs outside. People still think we're council run, which we're not. So it's all about social media, raising awareness of what we do, advertising events, um, the likes of yourself coming down here and with your platform helps us to grow and reach people that we can't reach or don't reach. Social media is quite interesting. Breaking out of the circle is always quite a challenge. It's like one of the most populated 
cities in the, in Europe, but yet you don't see a lot of use of public facilities along the seafront, whereas if you come past here on a Saturday, it's unbelievable. So we're here in the, the, what's called the pool bowl. This used to be um, uh, a jump, jump bowl, bowl to bowl, which about 25 years ago was converted into like, basically it's a swimming pool that come from the California style of the backyard swimming pools that the skaters would go and skate in obviously a lot better weather than what we have here, although it's lovely today. Um, but we want to take it back to 40 years of the skate park to the old bowl, which if you zoom your camera around and you can have a look. Mm -hmm. So we've got some volunteers working on this right now to bring back a little bit of the history of the park. Because um, we are old, so part of the idea is that we celebrate the fact that we're old. And I see he's got some graffiti here then, so what, who, what kind of artists have been involved in this section? Uh, and there's a guy, uh, Morph, a uh, local guy, Bark, uh, Mimic, Lex, who works for Sea Dog. Um, studio so real community thing so this is the old uh, snake run that was originally built in 1978 and we we're actually having some work done on this where the bowl is being skimmed down so it's a lot smoother part of the idea of this is just smoothing it out so it's like a brand new bowl ready for the anniversary on the 16th 17th of June people can come we'll have a grand opening and people can come and skate it and not get absolutely cut to death because it's gets quite weathered these were originally back in the 1970s designed to slow people down, which now people don't want to slow down, they want to go faster. So we're just trying to constantly improve the skate park and improve this side of the skate park. There's definitely two sides of the skate park. You've got the more heritage side and then the more modern day side over the other side with the park course, the new mini ramp underneath the um, bandstand and we have a pro standard vert ramp that's the same as what Tony Hawk's ramp is in California, which is amazing. Can you explain a little bit more about that ramp? I'll take you over there if you want. Yeah, okay, let's go, let's head over that side. This is a 14 foot high ramp. As you can see, pretty scary. So some of the world's best half pipe riders will be here this summer, competing in the shut up and skate competition on the 17th of June. We also have the King of Concrete on the first weekend of August. Last year we had the X Games number one BMX rider here, which was amazing. For free, we didn't have to pay for, to get him here, that was pretty cool. Um, I hope he comes back this year. So people can go up to like 14 foot out of this, believe it or not, which, so you're obviously almost 30 foot, you know, up in the air, which is, you have to see it, to be honest, to. It's a real daredevil side of the sport. How often does it get used then, generally? Um, there's like a session tomorrow which we call Vert Thursdays where everyone meets up and it's a community thing and they, they come and use it. Um, kids learn their tricks on here because believe it or not, the bigger the ramp it's actually easier to do the tricks rather than the smaller ramp. So it gets used every day. It's obviously just not at the moment whilst you're here, it's yeah. difficult. <laughs> 1920 you said the bandstand's from? Yeah, uh, the bandstand, 1920s. People used to roller skate around here nowadays. We've always wanted to put a ramp over here. So finally got it, it's got a three foot ramp, which is totally extreme from the vert ramp, which is 14 foot. This one has been a lot of use with computer kids and skateboarders. So it's a, not a daunting. And quite a lot of our customers just want to chill out after a long day at work. And I call them like the bread and butter customers of the park. that just want to come and have a chilled ride or skate. And this is quite nice for it. Uh, we're working on um, having a cover so we can always have this open. Big, big part of our business is lost as soon as it rains. So it'd be nice to have a couple of areas um, under cover so we can battle the winter months. Really. Is that something you're going to maybe consider a bit further as well? Maybe have some like larger marquee style roofing? Yes, yeah, so it would, would be nice, yeah. So this is the, what I was referring to as the park style um, course we've got the big fun box which the guys do jumps over James if he's kind enough might demonstrate what a box is used for and then we have some ramps that this one here is called the wave which kind of emulates like a surfing type feel 
where people get a bit more flow over it. Um, and then we link it together. For years, this was a roller hockey rink only. So there used to be a fence all the way along here. We got rid of the fence and opened up the whole skate park so people can flow. And it's got like a, a more international sort of park standard. Like it, we, we hold um, international competitions here in the summer and it's like something that where they don't have to bring ramps into put the event on it's just ready to go sponsorships ongoing um, we are a social enterprise so if you'd like to get involved in sponsoring the park you can always um, drop us a message on our social media or mail at southskatepark.com or get in touch with us via team locals that'd be awesome any helps always appreciated thank you from us for watching just wanted to reiterate again that South Sea Skate Park is 40 years old this year they're an amazing charity and they need your help to keep going so tell as many people as you know about the park if you're into skateboarding BMXing scooters and rollerblading then this is the place for you go and check it out you can find out more about them at southseaskatepark.org